Hello and welcome. If you're sitting comfortably, I'll begin by reading some words written by Oliver Postgate. He wrote them about the music that John Faulkner and I wrote, arranged and performed and recorded for the TV series Bagpuss, uh, created by Oliver Postgate and Peter Furman in the 1970s for the BBC. This is what he wrote. The music for our small films had always been prepared a bit formally. It had to be composed, arranged and eventually played by a small orchestra. So it was a bit unnerving when John and Sandra turned up with a dozen or so unlikely instruments, lots of enthusiasm and not the slightest idea what we were going to do next. Nothing daunted, we set to and had the time of our lives, making up and recording the musical accompaniment to our new small series about an old cat who lived in a shop window. Years later, I still find that the music and songs which they did for Bagpuss are the central delights of the films. The premise of the films was that there was once a little girl called Emily who had a shop. It didn't sell anything. Um, it was presided over by a saggy old cloth cat and Emily would bring to the cat, that was Bagpuss of course, things that were broken or lost. Bagpuss would then think magical thoughts in the form of stories and so on, uh, stories, um, verses, legends and so on, rhymes, uh, which would explain how the objects had got lost or how they got to the shop in the first place. Um, while he was telling these stories and legends and so on, a small army of mice who lived on a mouse organ, of course, um, would mend them, would mend the pieces, the objects, so that the owners could retrieve them and use them again. To work efficiently, the mice would sing. Time on a tradition, when you think of it, um, if you think about shanties, chain gang songs, lullabies and so on, all of which facilitate a job of work. Consequently, our first musical task was to create a short round of about eight bars uh, for the mice to use as a work song. Something like this. We will fix it, we'll unmix it, we will fit it up bit by bit. We don't mind at all, we will find it all, find each piece and make it fit. Something like that. Not so much a composition, actually, uh, as an adaptation of a 13th century round, Summer is a Coming In, uh, originally harmonised, says Chapel's popular music of the olden times, in the Northumbrian fashion. Summer is a coming in, loo de sing cuckoo, grow with sad and blow with mad and spring the wood anew. Sing cuckoo, you a bleater, thought a lamb, lo thought a cave coo. Bullocks that a bookie that a floody sing cuckoo. Cuckoo, cuckoo, well sings the cuckoo, the sweet on even do. A change in time signature from 6 8 to 4 4 gave us our mouse round and harmonise it we did, in squeaky voices, with Oliver insisting that his was the out-of-tune mouse. Sorry to say it was, but it made it all the more charming. Some of our unlikely instruments were used purely as sound effects. For example, when Bad Puss woke up at the beginning of the films, an upward sweep on the strings of the Appalachian auto harp sounded just right. Unfortunately, that particular instrument, my Appalachian Auto Harp, is in quarantine in Sheffield and I'm in quarantine in Northumberland, so I can't actually show you what I'm talking about. But what we do have is a clip of a, another public lecture I did at the Ferrens Gallery in Hull last year. So I took my Auto Harp and I went. Uh, 
um, but um, Oliver went, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Are you sure that's all you want? Yes. But then, stroke of genius, when it was going to sleep time for backwards. <laughs> so, that wonderfully lively instrument came into its own ethnicity, as it were, later in the series when we sang and told the sad story of the little king, little king, on a big, cold, stony throne. With this piece, Oliver had written a rough text with a standard four-line stanza. A little tweaking of the structure and put to the tune of an American play party song, uh, it became much more quirky, much more fun to sing. And um, again, I can't demonstrate the song, but we can go back to another clip of um, a public lecture at the Ferrans Gallery and a version of The Bony King of Nowhere. The Bony King of Nowhere sat upon his throne. He didn't much like sitting there because his throne was his throne was made of stone. His throne was made of marble white. The feet were made of gold. It was a royal throne, all right. But oh dear, it was it was extremely. Oliver Postgate was an inventor as well as a writer, actor and filmmaker. Um, and as an inventor, he was always delighted by technical terminology uh, of all kinds. So were John and I, and we'd come across a lot of it because we were very familiar with uh, 19th century broadsides indust of industry and so on, of the Industrial Revolution. That made a perfect match when we came to jointly creating a song about um, how the cushion for that bony old king, um, how the cushion was woven. We needed a weaving song and it had lots of lovely terminology in it. Uh, we went to a traditional Scots song, the Carlton Weaver, for the tune and ended up with this. I'm a weaver, a master weaver. I've got a room where the best cross made. Plain got twelve brocade or satin. I'm the master of my trade. Share the walk, swing the shuttle, feed the reed, the weft is One of our more unlikely instruments. We borrowed some rather unlikely melodies, actually, uh, for adaptation, including one of my favourites, the tune for the Canty Fable of the Frog Princess, uh, was developed from an English folk song, The Furs Field, which had been collected by Gardner uh, from Moses Mills in um, Hampshire in 1907. The original, goes like this, here's a verse. I have got a first field, me own dearest jewel, where all me fine pheasants do play. And if you comes a hunting, when hunting's in season, I'll tell you love how to proceed. You bring your dog with you, your gun in hand, loaded and primed, all I'll at your command. When the pheasants take flight, you must take sight. You shoot the next moment, you're sure to be right. Why this deeply erotic yet cleverly codified piece should suggest itself for use as the melody for a song um, about a, a very independently minded princess and a stroppy frog. I'll leave you to uh, think about. Nonetheless, I'll sing you now what that melody became in the story of the frog princess. This is the Appalachian Dolphin. 
that was me banging on the guitar. was a princess, a lovely sad princess, who lived in the shade of a cool mountain pool. Her eyes they shone bright as the stars in the moonlight, but our heart it was sad as she sat on her stool. For all she ever saw they were lords by the scholar so proud and so perfect with each one a fool. They said you must choose me, it's useless to refuse me, you know you must marry, cause that is the rule. Not all of the songs were newly crafted of course. Sometimes we'd use pieces from the traditional repertoire of these islands if they happened to fit with the story that Oliver had created. Children's games and nursery rhymes were appropriate and would add resonance and familiarity. Pieces like I saw a ship a sailing or there was no woman tossed up in a basket and so on. There was also plenty of scope for playing jigs, reels, hornpipes, waltzes, strathspeys, uh, which John and I were used to playing and including in our live performances at folk clubs and in concerts. We often used the fiddle for those and this instrument, the English concertina. instruments that we used on a song which Oliver Postgate wrote completely without any help from us, text and tune. And the keynotes of the melody he created uh, were used in the opening phrases of the title music. <laughs> Taken from this song. song however which is a complete mystery I don't know where we conjured the melody from for a, a completed text that Oliver had given to John and I no idea where it came from at all but I do know that it was one of Oliver's favorites and the other thing I know is that actually it was Oliver who was the central delight of the films of Bagpuss I'll finish then with the Miller song <clears throat> plowman, plowman, plow me a field, turn me an acre of land. Plowman, plowman, harrow the ground, drill in the seed and roll it down. The year will turn, the spring comes. Seed will grow, shine the 